In the 1920s and 30s, physics professor Moritz Schlick was at the center of a diverse group of thinkers in Vienna who met to discuss philosophy. They came to be known as the Vienna Circle and included in their number Rudolf Carnap, Otto Neurath, and Kurt Gödel. It was at these meetings that logical positivism was born, one of the most profoundly influential movements of the 20th century. Logical positivism asserted that the only kind of sensical discourse was scientific. With its emphasis on sense and meaning, the Vienna Circle owed an obvious debt to Wittgenstein's early work. Uh, they did think that the details of Wittgenstein's uh, theory of meaningfulness uh, should be changed. They thought the logical system that he imposed was too narrow, and they thought that there was all sorts of metaphysical elements uh, in the statement of the theory which didn't need to be there. So they took it upon themselves to recast that general idea. And they came up with what's called the verificationist theory or criterion of meaning. And the idea was that statements come, meaningful statements come in essentially two classes. In one class, we have statements that are either true in virtue of meaning alone or false in virtue of meaning alone. And for these, you don't have to investigate the world at all in order to um, understand them or know them to be true or false. But the other class of meaningful statements, these are statements about the world, and these ought to be statements that could be verified or falsified by ordinary empirical observation. In 1929, the Vienna Circle published its manifesto, The Scientific Conception of the World, which advanced the view that the only meaningful statements were those that are either empirically verifiable or grounded in logic and mathematics. All else was deemed emotive. As a result, logical positivism held that the sentences of metaphysics, ethics, and aesthetics were in fact not statements at all. The statements of ethics and aesthetics were either basic commands, thou shalt not kill, or basic exclamations of approval or disapproval, impressionism, boo, or cubism, hooray, and the statements of metaphysics were just plain meaningless. The harmonious feeling or attitude which the metaphysician tries to express in a monistic system is more clearly expressed in the music of Mozart. Metaphysicians are musicians without musical ability. Logical positivism rejected as illegitimate every statement about the world that was not based on direct experience. This position formed the basis of the verification principle. A sentence can be meaningful if and only if it is either empirically verifiable or it can be shown to be true by analyzing the conventional meanings of its signs or symbols. In other words, understanding the meaning of a proposition now required that you know how to verify it. A sentence is only meaningful when we can verify it by experience, by some kind of, you know, uh, visual or auditory or whatever experience. When a sentence can't be verified, shown, proven, at least, made highly likely or something by 
experience, then it's meaningless and just really, literally has no meaning at all. It doesn't even get to be false. It gets to be no meaning. It's not that it's wrong. It's just, it's like when a cat purrs. That's not right or wrong. It's just the noise. The logical positivists held that scientific hypotheses could be reduced to what they called protocol statements, which are the basic reports of direct observation. These reports form the standard by which other empirical statements are to be tested. This view raised the question, didn't protocol statements themselves need to be verified? Otto Neurath held that they cannot be the starting point of the sciences, which led him to compare knowledge to a ship that has to be continually rebuilt, even while it is still at sea. Reconciling the objectivity of science with the subjectivity of personal experience presented a challenge to the Vienna Circle. If experience takes the form of private sense data, how can science achieve the attitude of detachment to which it aspires? Neurath and Rudolf Carnap tried to resolve this conflict with a revised version of materialism called physicalism. The aim of physicalism was to turn physics into the catalyst for unifying the sciences. It stated that everything that exists or happens can be completely described in the vocabulary of physics. Here then was the holy grail of logical positivism, a scientific language that could theoretically give voice to all the sciences.